So here uh, in the last session, we were discussing about the factors that cause the incident. Ekda, next point lo choose nete the factors and the hazards. Ekda, next point lo want to know what he is telling is effectiveness of no hazard program. That means if there is an incident, that means your risk assessment has failed. And uh, you have to revive your hazard and risk assessment again, taking this incident into the consideration. Then monitor safety performance of the company that I have already shown you the slide. We, each month we prepare uh, HSE reports and annually also we compare with previous or for the whole year. Enable inter-firm comparison of safety per performance means if a company is manufacturing a product that is similar to other company who is also manufacturing, then you can take the statistics of that particular company, consider them, their safety report, compare with yours. If their safety report is better than yours, that means some problem is there in your system and that you have to identify and rectify. And the background sound was in the So, time period to notify the incident that requires to be notified within the duration of happening, authorities to be notified. Yavar kande mano notice is to either incident in the kundi company lo yavar chip to the first two. If there is an incident within a company who to whom we give the notice? Uh, to the in charge. Managing the plant. Plant yeah, sir. If, to the in charge, HOD, or you can say to the manager. And if there is some uh, serious uh, accident, then to whom to tell? Plant head. Who? Plant head, sir. Plant head. Plant head, yeah. Plant head, say, if there is some death uh, in the uh, organization, then to whom do you, to whom does the company tell? Factory inspector. Factory inspector. Factory inspector. Yeah. It is the factory inspector. What is the stipulated time, maximum time? Within 24 hours. Yeah, but uh, section 88 of IFS is within 48 hours. If it is reduced or uh, if it is revived, I don't know. But uh, section 88 says it is 48 hours. So whatever it is. No, sir. Uh, yes? No, sir. Please proceed. Notice of the incident. Dangerous uh, occurrence required to be sent by the manager of the factory within the duration of happening to the incident occur by telephone, email, now you have email, special messenger or telegram. Telegram is now outdated, so you have the email now to the inspector of the factories. So type of reporting, we have different types. One is the first aid, incident reports, incident investigating reports, Incident particular cards, that is a uh, safety observation cards we save. Day to day, that is related. Safety education and training reports, that is within the organization. Yes. The purpose of an incident record. It is to evaluate the magnitude of the incident rate of incident and then a data analysis to prevent the incident to create interest among workers now how do you create an interest among the workers sir uh, by creating some safety culture safety program incident learnings or something so these workers yeah, yeah. could understand 
Then you have uh, yeah, safety bulletins and other things. We change the method of training, giving pep talk, yeah. conducting uh, what you call uh, uh, giving certain topics to the workers and asking them to write the essays and other things. So this is one of the methods. Then measure the efficiency of the presence of safety promotional activities. Take changes if, ne if necessary. So if there is an incident, so what are the changes that you do as a HSC person? You want that uh, if the incident would be happening like in or uh, related to the mechanical parts, definitely engineering controls would be uh, redesigned so that the incident would not be. If people related or any uh, employer related, they have to skill through the trading. And third thing, if any process changes, then the process would be changed as per the existing design. Yeah. Then you'll change your training. Then you'll change your risk assessment. SOP will be changed. So a lot of changes this will be bringing in about. Then incident investigation. After the commencement of the incident, incident can be found out and investigated within that time duration. That means... HSE person cannot take weeks and months to investigate an incident. It should be within a time frame. Incident investigation aim is to see the same type of incident does not occur again and again. That is why we go for data analysis and root cause analysis. Now I'll ask you a question. Stay within an organization. Okay. Because of Mr. A, the incident has happened. Can a safety person write in his report that because of Mr. A, this has happened? Can he write that? So, really, uh, so safety officer ga. A vekti valle ayindi tanwale karu tanwale ayinda man matla ayin report write karma. Yes. Can anyone uh, write like that? That because of this person, this has happened. Then find out the root cause of incident. The root cause means the reasons behind the incident that has happened. Now, what are the principles of incident investigation? It should be fact finding. HSC person cannot assume theories and write on his own. Be careful with all your reports. If you are uh, HSC, something has happened in your side. Do not assume something has happened and write a theory on your own words. Go to the side, find the fact and put whatever you have observed over there. The every incident should be investigated. That means even the non-near miss should be investigated. Investigate each clue. Suitable practical and preventive measures should be given to the management. Each witness should be separately inquired means sometimes, you know, if something incident happened because of the person, he may be blamed or something because of that uh, fear, they may form a group. So call each witness separately and ask them what has happened. Only then you can come to the real picture of the incident. Then uh, investigation should be done immediately after the incident. It should not be, you know, after the incident, after one week or two weeks, because the evidence is maybe erased. Now, the purpose of the investigation in uh, investigation of the incident is to determine the root causes so that similar things uh, do not uh, uh, recur again. Change the deviation of the procedure. That means your SOPs and other things will change. Design and plan a suitable training. Publicize a particular hazard among the employees and supervisors so that they will be aware of something that should not repeat again. 
Then, then incident analysis. Why do we do for the incident analysis? The reason behind this is to determine the preventive measures to be taken to achieve the ultimate goal of zero incident. Now, see, every organization, if you see uh, in their, uh, what you call uh, policies, QHC policy or HSC policy, if you see, the it says that we have zero incident policy. Practically, it is not possible. Virtually, some management to show their better pictures to the society or to the, what you call, uh, within the organization, they just suppress the facts. But virtually, it, practically, it is, it is never possible for zero incident. Incident reporting and investigation, there are two prerequisites to the in incident analysis. That means for any incident analysis, first the in incident investigation has to be finished. It has to be report. Then only you can analyze. Now here, for analysis, this is called FR or the frequency rate. Frequency rate is the number of disabling injuries. Now here I have uh, taken per million. This is the old one. But in the formula I have taken as 2 lakhs. For practical purpose, new method is to calculate the frequency rate for every 2 lakh. Similarly, you have severity rate. CVRT rate is also total number of man days lost in a year due to accident by total man hours worked into 2 lakhs. Now, how do you calculate the man days and man, man hours? So, the third calculation what the HSC person does is number of man days charged per Injury that is total mandates lost plus mandates charged by man hours worked. So, incident prevent uh, prevention measures the incident prevention measures are the five E's for incident prevention preventing of unsafe act, preventing unsafe condition, safety tag system. Safety in housekeeping, hazard checklist, and color coding. So these are the incident preventive measures. And five is, I think you have got a question of eight marks in last year question paper. So this is very important. We'll see each one of these. So what this five E stand for? So this five E stands for engineering, education, enforcement, enthusiasm and evaluation this is very important from the examination point of view so this 5 e stands for incident preventing the first e stands for engineering education enforcement enthusiasm and evaluation so engineering now, when we say the project stage is the apt time for planning safely. So to all you participants, I have one question. At what stage does the safety start within a project? Take, for example, a construction project. At what stage it starts? starts? Um, excavation stage, sir. Excavation stage, then? Any other answer? Design stage. From the beginning. Yes, absolutely right. It is at the design stage. Safety starts from your drawing board. From the design person. He takes, he calculates the safety factor for each and everything. At site, as per the condition, HSC is involved with the engineers to look that uh, to take appropriate steps to see that the incident doesn't happen there. So safety starts at the design stage. The project stage is the app time for planning and safely while management has the obligation to make the work environment safer by 
using all the latest techniques. This you don't expect from private companies much. Government agencies should exercise more control in the project stage itself. Can you tell how, how government agencies take control? Uh -huh. Engineering continuation also update the technology. Update of the technology should be given preference over the outdated one, even though it is costlier. But usually we don't do this because of the cost factory occurring in at the site. The highest level of safety can be achieved only through applying the engineering controls. Keep in mind. Someone was uh, some uh, one of our participants was telling PPEs. PPEs is the last resort. It is not the primary what you call uh, application that will uh, save a person. It is the last resort. The first always should be engineering controls. Now here I have given hierarchy of the control. Now the first one is elimination. <coughs> Physically remove the hazard. Substitution. Engineering control. Administrative control. And the last one as I have told it is the PPEs. Now for a work at height. From where will you, from which uh, step will you will, uh, apply the hierarchy of controls? Uh, sir, engineering uh, controls to PP. Uh, why not elimination uh, and substitution? Why, why, why don't we don't we use elimination or substitution for work at height? Sir, uh, possibly uh, some of the activities like you know changing of light in the height could not be substituted. There we can have some engineering controls like go barrier and something and administrative control like work permit signages, something like that and PP could be. But substitution could not be imposed. That is my view. Yeah, see, absolutely. See, work at height, you cannot eliminate the work at height. If some machinery problem is there and that has to be repaired, then it has to be gone. The people have to go there and work. So, for that work at height, they, it has to start from engineering controls. In education, research has led to conclusion that over 98% of the incidents are due to human failure. Human failure is unsafe act. If adequate steps are taken to overcome human failure by proper education, then the incident prevention will be a reality. But you know, this, can you apply for a construction industry this step? If adequate steps are taken to overcome human failure by proper education, then the incident now how do we educate our uh, staff one is job training then uh, you giving them a proper sops permit system for then ppes for them and also the first aid measures as a safety is getting importance in the industry to study safety can be included in the school curriculum that is why if you see the kindergarten or first aid for them, uh, road safety is given, then your kitchen safety is given. 
बैठ गए चले रामानु आप चल बंद मैक्सिमम पब्लिसिटी सो दैट द मैसेज ऑफ द इंस्टिट्यूट हाँ वहाँ तो ना एल बुक बिचे आये नहीं अब मैं अंकित इनको ना आये लो यानी I am getting lot of background noises. Babu, seva maji. Your view is not better, man. Okay. Ali, you prefer my name? Yes, I am Ali. Ali. Ah, ah. What is that? Ali. Ali, Ali. Observe safe practice. Ah, okay. Ali, Ali. Training programs. In some incident, drastic measures or penalties may occur. May become necessary to prevent the spread of unsafe practice. Now in the construction industry, we, we follow this step. If an employee is not performing or not performing according to the procedure, if he is doing you know horseplay or he is doing unsafe act, we counsel him three to four times. If he doesn't listen, then we go for penalties. Even if he doesn't listen, then the last resort is to remove from the site. So enforcement, enforcement, safety, discipline, one and all is vital. Professor, are you going to ask something? Like, say, class one or class two, some of them. Safety enforcement can be better done in industry by using safety codes in standing order. Anything can be resisted or at outset. Now this is a very big problem in construction industry. If you want to try to try as a HSC person, if you try to enforce rules with your workforce, there will be lot of resistance among them. First they will try to avoid and have to counsel and do other things. Let the worker frame rules and management follow. Now, where do, uh, can you tell me one situation where the workers frame the rules and management follows the rules? One situation. <laughs> Sir, please repeat the question. <laughs> See, safety committee is uh, the mixture of management and the trade unions. come from the union people. That is accepted by the management and management follows their recommendations. Enthusiasm as a human failures account almost all the incident. It is possible to eliminate <laughs> that is through risk assessment. Hello, sir. Somebody is voicing uh, coming more than you. Hi. Yes. Can you please ask them to mute? Somebody else's voice is coming. We are not able to hear your voice. Yeah, even I'm getting disturbed. Participants, please mute your. Uh, Microphones, unless and uh, until you answer that, don't uh, on it. According to the report, products from industrial workers was 8% higher when they are happy. Do you agree with this point? The production of industrial workers can increase when they are happy. Yes, sir. How? Because their morality would be very high. And if they feel the uh, workplace is safe, they can work uh, more happily on their uh, supposing machines or in any service where they are willing to do their work with the safe environment. And their productivity would be higher. Yeah, and uh, moreover, at the end of uh, financial year, some of the management shares its uh, yeah, what you call uh, profit with the workforce. If nothing, not much loss is there for the company with also safety. 
maintaining the morale of the workers is the prime duty of the management. All kinds of motivational programs, safety awards, uh, essay contests we do. Safety suggestion program also we do. And uh, the most important is participation of the workers in deliberations of safety. Mm -hmm. Government can appreciate good safety records by issuing medals, trophies and certificates. So some of the companies, if you see, they write, you know, that they are the winner of uh, the best safety company or something from the government. Evaluation. Continuous, uh, continuous evaluation program, procedures and performance is must to improve the safety. Safety committee can work in this line. How safety committee can improve your, uh, what do you call, safety of an organization? I, uh, I, two, three things which I can understand that uh, while sharing the, uh, if any incident, second thing is that if is any initiatives to mitigate any risk, and the third thing is the safety rewards and recognitions. Yeah, first, uh, yeah, all points are valid. Now, safety committee is a participation of both management and the workers. So, in oh, this safety company, senior uh, management involvement is so all, have basic, all have basic uh, ideas and the chance to bring the hazardous condition or uh, unsafe act or unsafe condition to the management. It can also give recommendation to the uh, management to change certain SOPs. Then you have GSA. What is GSA? Job safety analysis. What is the difference between GSA and uh, risk assessment? Is it same or different? GSA risk assessment worked in all like both very very na. The same. Both. Huh? Both are different. Both same. are different. How? Both are not same, sir. Yeah, how? How they are different? The GSA, GSA deals with specific yes. job task. What, what? They... Yes, yes. Yes. GSA deals with uh, the specific job that is uh, designed and uh, we have to identify uh, related to that. Uh, what are hazard in that particular job. Okay. And uh, regarding risk assessment, it is overall for the uh, whole activity means you can say uh, overall project. No, no, no. See, so job safety analysis and risk assessment can be for, for a particular job. Job safety analysis is qualitative analysis. It is a qualitative risk assessment. Whereas risk assessment is quantitative risk assessment. That is the difference. Now, in GSA, for a hazard, I'll write what you call uh, the uh, consequence may be medium, low, or high. Only that I write. Whereas in risk assessment, I go for rating. 5 into 5 matrix with one, uh, 1 to 5 as there. Maximum will be 5 into 5, 25. So when I quantify that hazard, then it is a risk assessment, task risk assessment. If I don't quantify that, it becomes GSA. Got? Similarly, no, GSA no. also, GHA is also there. Job Hazard <laughs> Analysis. Another one is there. AHA, Activity Hazard Analysis. All these three are almost same. Then Preventive Measures for Unsafe Act. Corrective actions by supervisory staff. A well-trained supervisor can identify unsafe act or unsafe condition and he can take appropriate actions to eradicate that. Now, this is where the wisdom of HSC person comes in. For any task, it is the primary duty of HSC person 
to coordinate with engineering team take their sops or work instruction or procedure for production identify the hazards go for risk assessment it is his job either it can be gra that is group risk assessment or individual he can do if he has the capacity but if he is not well trained if he is not uh, knowing how to identify unsafe condition and unsafe act he cannot do that special efforts however may be required on his part to overcome long standing bad habits of some of his workers you know some of uh, the worker this is a major problem in construction industry every day you will have some argument with the workforce then compulsory use of ppes now if an uh, in an organization if safety culture is very high the people automatically they take the ppes and they start using it so use of protective equipment steel toed shoes you know all this pp what the ppes are workmen not using observing the rules should be educated caution warned and discipline this is what hsc person does at uh, site he will counsel them he will train them if not he will give a written caution he will verbally warn them the last resort is to remove him for, from the site then preventing unsafe facts general awareness of bad habits should be given through lectures working committees all this comes under the safety training course then counseling of the workforce and help from the union this help from the union is a part in your safety committee where we try to make the union understand the importance of their workforce if they are not listening to the management then preventing unsafe conditions though majority of the incident is a direct cause usually unsafe act of the person still as we have seen in the theories and other things 10% is because of the unsafe conditions now how do we eliminate that the factors for eliminating unsafe conditions can be suitable safe design and construction as we have told that the safety starts from the design stage itself safeguarding all the machines and equipment moving parts this in your syllabus you have uh, what you will uh, machine guarding system you have then uh, safe arrangement of materials process and method of work then suitable safety devices adequate suitable ventilation adequate suitable illumination proper ppe now can you tell me what can be safety devices example of safety devices can anyone guess what uh, safety devices are fire safety equipment which one fire safety equipment uh, safety device uh, it's not like a device like, ELC, like if you have uh, generator okay is an example of which one this device elcb <laughs> yeah yeah elcb is ELCB is very good example of this one. Very good example, okay. ELCB. Then what is the safety tag system? Safety tag system is, uh, it is from examination point of view, this is very important. Incident prevention tags are used temporary means of warning to the employees in an existing hazard. And uh, tag system in the war zone is temporary warning employees it should not be placed it should not be used in place of substitute for incident prevention sign chonde sab incident prevention sign vere safety tag system vere safety tag is a temporary means of warning concerned hazard condition defective equipment radiation etc the tags should not be considered as a complete warning method until 
positive means can be employed to eliminate the hazard. Now here, if you see the second one, temporary means of warning. Can you tell me where we use the safety tag system? Electrical one example. Panel. Electrical panel, Loto. Yeah, Loto is one system. Then other one? Barricading. Barricades are used uh, like drop zone. No, no, barricades is not a tax uh, safety uh, tax system. Okay, okay. That is a very uh, this. Okay, only tagging system is required. Okay. Yeah, yeah, tagging system. See, on the scaffold you use. Okay. Then monthly HSC person inspects the instrument of uh, the organization. He goes for uh, coding system. Color coding, they, it is a, a tag system. Now here, they should not be used in place of a sub or as a substitute to incident prevention sign. What is incident prevention sign? Can uh, one example be given? See, this, uh, these are the tags. This is for a uh, scaffold that uh, is used. So tags are defined as a surface made cardboard or a paper cardboard that is temporary, not permanent, in which letters or markings can appear or both. That means it can be a pictorial representation or a written re representation. They give warning for give or give safety instruction to the employee who will be exposed to the hazard. They are affixed or attached to the equipment device or system by using a string, wire, adhesive. The tag should be made in two language. That means one English is a compulsory language. The second language, whatever local or regional language is there, you can make in that also. So can you tell me how many colors are used in uh, safety tag system? What is the uh, color coding for a safety tag system? How many colors we are going to use? Green. Any any colors you see as no? safety tag? Three. Three colors, sir. Yes, what are they? Green, red, yellow. Yellow, a produce as Red, a produce as Green, a produce as uh, It's four, sir. <laughs> One is black for red. Black red, and white. Orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, green. Red, orange, yellow, green. Orange, where are you using that? Yellow, uh, orange, uh, generally for the uh, uh, mandatory signage in the some uh, print and such, uh, certain things. No, no. We'll, I'll come. Uh, the last part of this uh, will be your color coding system. That is different, but for safety tag color coating system, black and white is for general information, red is for danger, green is for safety, and uh, yellow is for warning. Say, for example, if you have a yellow tag on the scaffold, that means you're not permitted to go and work, 